Mr. Speaker, this Conservative government is giving our largest corporations billions of dollars in tax breaks while shutting the doors on Service Canada community offices throughout rural Canada. These centres are open every day and are a lifeline for those who need to access government information on a daily basis. In Newfoundland, people are being told to go online or wait until a Service Canada employee visits the community, which may be two days a month. I asked the Minister, how can the government save money on the backs of rural Canadians and give billions in tax breaks to our largest corporations? The Honourable Minister of Human Resources and Skills Development. Well, Mr. Speaker, our government is committed to providing Canadians with access to information and the benefits and services to which they have a right. Mr. Speaker, that's why we're actually improving the service to, to be delivered to her her constituents. Well, we're, right now, the people who are there do not work for the government. They cannot offer very much in the way of information or service. So what we're doing is we're putting in government employees there who will actually be able to provide services to these citizens in terms of helping them get their old age security or their CPP or social insurance number. We're going to make sure they get the service. Honourable Member for Random, Buren St. George's. Mr. P Mr. Speaker, sending people to the internet when many rural Canadians don't have access to high-speed internet is an insult. Yes. Expecting people to organize their lives to coincide with the schedule of a service Canada employee who may get to the community, depending on the weather, and in my riding on a ferry schedule, is completely unreasonable and inconsiderate. Hundreds of jobs will be lost throughout the country. Why is it the Prime Minister can find all the staff he needs to put up 10,000 signs worth $40 million, but won't find the dollars to keep the people who provide these essential services. The Honourable Minister of Human Resources and the Skills Development Order. Mr. Speaker, I do wish the Honourable Member would stop here, Marlon Creek, and let her constituents know the real facts. With this new outreach situation, what we're going to be doing is provide service, service that wasn't available in these communities before. We're going to have qualified government employees who will actually be able to process, accept and process the applications for old age security, for guaranteed income supplement, for Canada Pension Plan, for social insurance number. Mr. Speaker, we want her constituents to have these services, to be able to do it at home. Why doesn't she help us with that? Exactly. The Honourable Member.